What's up ladies and gents, Ghost here, and today I'm going to be talking about some of the changes that DICE have been making to Battlefield 4, and whether I actually think that they're beneficial to the game or not. So, we got a huge patch a few days ago, you probably saw my previous video talking about some of the helicopter changes, the nerfs to the MAA and the active radar missiles and that sort of thing, but today I just really wanted to go over some of the other important changes, I'm not going to go over everything, I will link the blog down below so you guys can see all of the changes that were made to the game in detail, but I would just like to name some of the ones that personally I think have made a big difference to the game. Oh, and I kind of feel like after every patch comes out, people start slating dice, you know, and they're just like, oh, boo, they broke the game more than they fixed it now. But I have to say, this patch has been pretty damn awesome, and I really feel that dice are taking things in the right direction. And I, I, I can't feel that I'm, you know, alone when I say that. Yeah, they have kind of broken some things. The kill camera is totally fucked up beyond all repair. Sometimes I end up dying from a jet and it tells me that some sniper over in the distance has just headshotted me, which I find pretty hard to believe personally. But um, some of the good changes I think they've made are, for example, grenade changes. So they have now decreased the amount of damage that the mini grenades do from 80 down to 60. And before, they were pretty much the grenade of choice, you know, everybody would run with minis, and why would you not when you have three grenades that can do 80 damage apiece? So I feel that only giving them a max damage of 60 to balance out the fact that you get three of them is a worthwhile change. They've also nerfed the impact grenade in some ways, but buffed it in others. So now the damage has gone up from, I think it was around 67 before, it will now do a max damage of 80, but the radius that it will do it in has been decreased somewhat. Flashbangs have seen a buff, which is great. Nobody really ever used flashbangs. I think DICE saw that, and as such, they've decided to buff them a little bit. Their carry amount has been increased from 2 to 3 now, and the effect has been increased as well. So that's both for allies and enemies. You're going to get blinded for longer, and uh, probably more than before. I've actually yet to try them properly out, but I'm definitely looking forward to that. Now, this next change to the pistols is one that really excites me. So they have made the M412 Rex and the 44 Magnum take a little bit less time to actually shoot when you pull the trigger. So prior to this change, they were trying to make them true to life. So on a revolver, you have a hammer on the back and that hammer coming back uh, takes a little bit of time before the shot will actually fire when you pull the trigger. And I suppose they realize now that this was just making those pistols not fun at all. They've shortened that time a little bit. There is still a short delay, but I have now sort of equipped these pistols on all of my classes, and I've been trying them out a little bit as my secondaries, and I can say that I'm enjoying them much more. I feel like they're actually useful much more than before. Uh, they kind of felt just, you know, like you had to sort of aim in front of somebody just as you were sniping them off in a distance to compensate for the wait time. So they were pretty damn hard to use at close ranges, but now they feel much easier to use, and this is awesome, you know. These were like some of... Not just mine, but everybody's favourite pistols in BF3. I think I always run with the Rex on most of my uh, setups for all my different classes. Snipers love to use the Magnum at long ranges. They were just the two beast pistols in BF3. And when I saw they were coming to BF4, I was like, awesome, man. And it just sucked that they're completely unusable and nobody's used them. So it's great to see them getting a buff. Something else that has been buffed is the heavy barrel, which is another great change. This attachment was not used by anyone. I think I have seriously never seen it on anybody's loadout before now. And they've actually made it so that the buff that you get to your spread is applied to when you are moving as opposed to when you are just standing still as before. So once again, I'm going to be trying this out. I haven't given it much of a go yet, but it's going to be interesting to see whether it will actually be worth putting that on. Before, if you didn't need a muzzle break and you didn't need a compensator, most people would just go with no barrel attachment whatsoever. But now the heavy barrel is looking to be a good alternative to that. So those are most of the weapon and sort of infantry play changes, but they've also made a few fixes to the game, which are really welcome. For example, they have now synced up everything. So before, when you would get shot with a bullet, when the blood would appear on your screen, and when you saw hit markers when you were shooting an enemy, all of that would be completely out of sync, and it really gave you misleading information as to when you were taking damage and when you were dealing damage to an enemy. It seems that they've completely fixed that problem now, and have managed to sync everything up, so it took a long-ass time, but I'm just glad to see that they've finally fixed it. They've also made some changes to transitioning from hip fire to aiming down sight accuracy. 
So before the patch, if you were hip firing and you started to fire the clip from your weapon and then you transitioned to ADSing, you would keep the same hip fire accuracy pretty much the entire time that you were ADSing. So you had to be careful to stop firing, ADS, give it sort of half a second to get used to the new ADS aiming, and then you could start firing. They have now changed it so that it will actually change your accuracy of your weapon on the fly. So if you're hip firing and while still firing you ADS, it will actually change your accuracy for you after like half a second or so. The same goes for the sniper rifles, so now if you zoom in with the sniper rifles, it takes a little bit less time for that accuracy bonus of actually zooming down your scope to kick in and you can get a shot off a little bit quicker. It's not super fast, so you can't do quick scopes like in Call of Duty for example, but it's definitely a great change. So I covered most of the changes to the MAA, the active radar missiles, attack jets, attack helicopters and pretty much all of the air combat in my previous video so I'll link that on screen now if you want to go and check that out because I'm not going to sort of go over all of that again but one thing that I didn't go over was actually the scout heli and the tank so the scout heli has actually received a little bit of a nerf the 25mm cannon has had its splash damage reduced so you're not going to be able to kill multiple targets quite as easier with that splash as you could before the patch they did this to make the other cannons actually a little bit more appealing because because most people just went on to using the 25mm cannon and never look back after that. I know I can certainly say that that's true for myself. So they're trying to open things up, make sure that every weapon and uh, every ability within the game has some sort of a use. Staff shells have reduced the damage by 25%. I guess DICE thought they were a little bit OP. And certainly using staff shells in combination with any other sort of shell in the tank was pretty overpowered. I mean, everybody was running that setup. Staff shell, HE shell, staff shell, sabo shell, and you could just literally round a corner, um, take out a tank without really implementing any kind of tactics, you know, pillaring, hiding behind cover, any of that stuff. It just didn't matter. If the other guy wasn't running the same setup, you could just win because you could dish out more firepower in a shorter amount of time than he could. But now, they've actually changed it so that both shells share the same cooldown. So if you run staff shell and HE shell, and you fire your staff shell and switch to the HE shell, that will also be sharing the same cooldown. So now it's much more beneficial to run with one shell and a secondary such as the HMG. Alright guys, so that was pretty much most of the changes that have been made of note. We did of course get all of the naval strike weapons that have been unlocked. I've been unlocking a few of those, probably any of you who have been watching me on my live stream have seen me using some of those weapons. So far I've got the AR-160, which seems to be okay. A little bit of a slow rate of fire at 700 I believe it is, or maybe just slightly slower than that. It might actually be 680, so don't quote me on that, but... It's pretty slow, and uh, I find it kind of not that comparable to some of the other assault rifles out there. So, whilst being great at range, it's probably not going to be the best all-round assault rifle, I feel. However, the AWS for the assault class is just insane. Everybody's been screaming at me on my stream like, Ghost, have you unlocked the AWS yet? And I'm like, no, I haven't done it yet. But eventually, I went and ended up doing that, and uh, I have to say, I was not disappointed. That thing just feels like... It is an assault rifle with 100 rounds in a magazine. It's incredibly accurate. You can take out people at uh, longer ranges. It's got 800 rounds per minute. So you can take people down at short ranges pretty effectively as well. And yeah, I'm pretty sure this is going to be the LMG of favorites for the next few months, probably until the next expansion comes out. Although that said, knowing DICE, it's probably going to be in like three weeks. I'm not too keen on those uh, anti-air missiles as of yet. I've been killed with those whilst being in the attack jet quite a few times. And uh, they're getting to be a little bit annoying. They're kind of pissing me off, to be honest with you. So it's going to be interesting to see once everyone has them unlocked, how effective they actually are at killing you. All right, guys, so that is going to do it for this video. Just quickly before I go, I wanted to ask you guys if you would leave your comments down below for me and let me know what you think about this patch. I'm really glad to see that DICE have been making some of these very important changes to the game since it's come out. I feel that everybody now is very critical of DICE, whatever they really do, because of all the negative feedback around the game. But it's also very important, guys, to think, you know, when they actually do do something worthwhile and something that is in the interest of us as the players of Battlefield 4, it's definitely worthwhile to sort of praise them a little bit for that, I think, at least, and uh, say, hey guys, yeah, these are some great changes, keep it up. 
just super quickly before I go guys Titanfall is right around the corner in fact it is coming out tonight if you're in Europe at least if you're in Iceland for me so that is around 11 p.m. or 12 p.m. I think it may be for most of the Europeans out there GMT and I'm probably gonna be live streaming this evening uh, a lot of Titanfall. I'm really looking forward to covering this game on my channel. I'm looking forward to live streaming it. So be sure to follow me over on Twitch, www.twitch.tv slash ghostgaminggg. The link is in the description down below. So follow me over there if you want to know when I go live. And come and join in the fun, man. We always have a ball when we're live streaming. Lots of awesome guys come over there. We play together. We chit chat together. And yeah, it's just a lot of fun. So don't miss out on that. Thanks for watching. As always, guys. And I'll see you all in the next one. Cheers.